All right, we are here at my tiny DIY worm bin, and the first thing I notice in is there is some condensation on the lid, which I usually don't see. I guess that is to be expected this time of year because the heating and the air conditioning is off, so the, hu the house is naturally more humid than when that is running. The last feeding we did was a colorful feeding. We had a bunch of papaya, apples, bananas, that kind of thing. And it has been 28 days and four feedings since we started this bin. And something that is reoccurring is the strawberry top leaves. And Plant Obsess theorized that because these leaves are a little prickly, maybe the worms don't uh, go after them as quick. And she said same thing with kiwi skins. So we'll keep these in here and see if they attack them. But that's interesting theory. Maybe the prickly nature of it keeps the worms from attacking it. But we gave it pretty big feeding in here. There was a whole banana and then another half a banana, some more papaya, four apple slices, strawberry, tea bag, I think a little bit of a tomato. And this is part of potato skins. It is not the toilet paper rolls. So let's keep digging down here. I'm seeing some worms right away. And as expected with all the fruit and kind of the bigger feeding, I'm seeing some mites, really tiny mites, lighter color there. I don't know if you can see them, but they are on this little piece of potato skin. But let's keep digging down. I also want to feel the moisture level because it's feeling more moist than it has been. Again, I think that's because I don't have any kind of air conditioning running that dries things out. And oh yeah, this is part of the banana and right away we are seeing worms throughout it just squirming around right there. Really, really good. Look at the worms there. And this, I think, is part of the tea bag and the string that I've been experimenting with, seeing if they will eat the tea bags that we use. But this right here is part of that banana. It looks to me like they have eaten the flesh and now they're onto the peel. But we'll keep digging around. I'm just gonna try and pile this stuff up maybe in a corner so we can put it back in the feeding zone but it is gonna take them a few feedings to get through the banana peel. And certainly this part right here, we'll probably see it for a good portion of the bin's life. And it's actually still pretty firm, still pretty hard. And this right here is apple core. So the last couple feedings, I've been trying to test the limits of this worm bin, and I think we have found it. I think we, we now know about how much food it can take and we're, we're just gonna adjust from there. I was hoping the more moisture would help them be able to consume more food, and they're still doing a great job, but now I kinda know where the feeding levels are at in order to keep them busy. And yeah, right here, look at that. Look at all those worms in there. Really good showing. And you can see I've been using some paper along with the cardboard, and that's just to try and get my junk mail and the few bills I still have delivered, get them going into the vermicompost. I also have a regular compost bin that I usually put them in, but I just, something about having the worms eat your bills makes me happy. But let's keep looking through here. Big old fat one right there. Really good worms in here. And it had started with about 500, I think 491 to be exact for this go around of this bin. And such a difference, such a difference from the first four feedings on the original go around of this bin when I first got it and first created it. Wow, look at this. Really good, really, really more moist than I'm used to my worm bins being. I tend to run them just a little bit drier than most. That's not to say that they're dry at all. And here's a little baby right at the end of my finger. Well, it's not a baby, yeah, yeah it is, it is baby right there well let's call it a middle schooler <laughs> not quite a baby i don't run my bins dry at all but just maybe a little bit drier than some other bins that i've seen just helps me manage them better the very first bin i ever tried went anaerobic so i'm a little bit of a skeptic and that's another reason i kind of dig in here is just to kind of get an eye on all the material and make sure nothing's going anaerobic and this bin is looking great i mean it really is the worms are just all kinds of different ages of worms, which I love. 
so good to have that many different type, not types, because they're all red wigglers, but different ages of worms in there. You know that they're reproducing. And it's just looking good. The smell is perfect. It's just like a worm bin should be, which is no smell. But if you do smell it, it's just kind of like earthy, almost like being outside near the soil. No foul odors, no odors of the food that you put in here. I do see glint of liquid. It's, it's definitely not pooling, but it is moist down at the bottom. So, and you can see that the, the bedding sticks together, but also flakes apart. <laughs> almost like a moist cake and that is a that is a good moisture level for a worm bin it's looking good again just a little bit of glint right there you can tell that it's moist but it is not wet not pooling and there we're starting to see castings we're starting to see some good castings mixed all throughout this bedding in here which is pretty good for 28 days they're definitely getting to work. But right here, lots of good worms right there. I must have popped into a little bit of a food piece. But lots of worms right through there. Look at that. Really cool. Really good looking worms. Healthy. Their skin is all glistening and moist. And lots of different sizes. You can see right here maybe the orange tinge of the tail. All right, I think we're ready to set up the feeding zone. So let me get everything where it was and make a little trench in the middle. And I'm gonna go deeper. I wanna make sure that the food is down low and that the bedding goes on top of it. I know I'm moving this bin around a lot. It's a very tiny bin. I mean, you can see just from there how small it is. It's supposedly three gallon tote, but it looks smaller to me. All right, let's get some shredded cardboard and we'll begin the feeding. All right, put in a little layer of that. And then let's look at what we had in mind for the feeding today. I've got some, I think this is Ezekiel bread. It's either that or the honey wheat, but I think it's the Ezekiel bread just based on all the seeds that are in it. But it has some mold. And then I've got an apple, I've got tomato, I've got some banana peels, lots of pieces of apple, some papaya. And I froze all this food and then I thawed it out. So it looks a little nasty. Like right here is just mushy lettuce. So that's gonna be the feeding. And I'm actually gonna rip this bread up a little bit. We just got done with a carb experiment and the bread, surprisingly, within seven days in my Vermihut worm bin disappeared completely along with the spaghetti. So I consider bread fast food, definitely lettuce is fast food. The apple is more a slow food. We'll have some of that. A good mixture of both is helpful, I think. There's some more lettuce. Because you want them to be able to eat right away, especially in a new bin. You put some fast food and then slow food in there, some tomato, papaya. This is, this is a pretty considerable feeding here. In fact, I probably need to slow down a little bit. I'll give them the rest, just the fast food. Certainly the banana pulp itself, the, the fruit part is fast, but the peels are slow. And let me just do some grapes, which <laughs> are slow food. Um, yeah, slow food, and certainly the stems. But I always like to look for them when I check in the next time. So we'll put those right there. So that will be our feeding. I'm looking pretty good there. And then of course we do our coffee and you can see it's a little bit moldy. I just put my coffee grounds in here from my Keurig and they collect and then I mix them together. So on average, I would say the coffee is probably anywhere from three weeks to a month old. So it's coming with its own host of microbes in it. And then of course we do the grit, which is pulverized eggshells. And they use this in the gizzards and I'm always surprised when I come back in my worm bins, I never see piles of grit anywhere because they really do take it and, and use it and move it all around the bin. It's also really good for my garden. Let's put that food that we had previously in here too. Put that on top. So we get our feeding zone all set up and then we'll bury this all up. And if you enjoy this video or any of my videos, I appreciate a like and also subscribe. I've got two other playlists besides the tiny worm bin playlist and they're the Vermi Hut and the outdoor worm bin. I do different things in each and every worm bin's unique. So go ahead and check those out. But this is a pretty good feeding here. I definitely like how the bin's doing. It's a little bit moist compared to before, but it's doing great. I mean, nothing to be alarmed at at all. In fact, I would 
think most people would say this is a <laughs> perfect moisture. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this is going. So hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.